Okay, so now he's obtaining ozone from this machine, and we're going to ozonize. Uh, it's about 250 cc's of uh, blood that we remove uh, from the patients. This is a process called alto uh, therapy, uh, and uh, we ozonize the blood in order to hyperoxygenate it. But not only that, the the, the process of ozonating this also oxidizes the blood and produces a number of um, elements that are extremely beneficial for, for the patient. So the amount of oxygen is going to increase upwards of uh, from uh, threefold to sixfold. Okay. So this is going to be a hyper-oxygenated blood that goes back into the patient. But also it will produce uh, a, a, a very good amount of hydrogen peroxide that uh, promotes apoptosis of the malignant cell. Uh, this uh, uh, also is a very important immune stimulating process uh, for, for the patients. The other thing that it does is that it uh, brooms out some of the elements that, that produce uh, vasoconstriction of tumor vessels, and that is why the tumors maintain themselves hypoxic. And so when we're able to do this, the vessels open up and, and then uh, 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 the red blood cell is able to go through and oxygenate the tumor. And this uh, has been proven by a number of, of scientists, especially in in, uh, in, in Spain, a group from, from Spain was able to publish a paper showing that ozone in this fashion increases the amount of oxygen in the most hypoxic tissues of cancer. And in order for any therapy to work, it needs to be oxygenated. And that's why also chemotherapy. If you use chemotherapy and there's no oxygen, nothing happens. And so uh, all of these therapies, oxidative therapies, are going to work in oxygenated areas. Now, chemotherapy works very well then in benign cells, destroying them and provoking a great amount of, um, a great amount of, uh, uh, of damage and side effects and, and nothing to the tumor. Whereas when we use high dosages, for instance, of vitamin C, after we have oxygenated the tumor, the vitamin C is going to produce oxidation within the tumor and destroy it very similarly to chemotherapy without any of the side effects. And so this is in preparation for any type of oxidative therapy. Although by, on, on its own, oxygen will kill some malignant cells and the production of peroxide from this process will kill tumor, tumor cells. So there's, there's a tremendous amount of benefit to to the patients when, when we do this. Um, and uh, probably one of the most important is what we call oxidative preconditioning, because this is going to be a, a, a very important oxidative pr procedure. The patient's own system of antioxidant is going to be very, very uh, stimulated. And this stimulation lasts for months, at least four months. Uh, the publications show that it's between four and six months that they get this enormous protection. That's why in, in some countries, especially uh, from the old Eastern Bloc, they still use it for their athletes. Um, there are some motorcycle racers that, that will do this before they race because, and they increase their an antioxidative uh, capabilities. So. Again, the benefits of, of this is going to be hyperoxygenation, uh, preconditioning for oxidative therapies, immune stimulation, and vasodilation so that tumors can be, um, can be um, more prone to respond to any anti-tumor therapy that we do. So as you see, uh, I don't know if uh, maybe your camera will show it later, uh, bright very bright red, you know, from, from dark red. And as I tell you, the, the hyperoxygenation with this process is, is massive.
So a PO2 from a patient uh, when we do ozone that's normally around 100% will increase to 300 up to 600% with, with ozone. Yeah, in Germany they all do it. Yes. Uh, Germany was the, the precursor to all of these therapies, Al although uh, the Russians have a tremendous amount of experience and uh, many, many publications on ozone. There are clinics in, uh, in Russia that treat every kind of disease with ozone. Uh, autohematotherapy, but they also, they also inject ozone directly or they ozonize uh, 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 solutions uh, like saline solutions. Uh, so depending on the disease and the amount of ozone that you need, then uh, ozone is also applied directly to the patient um, through the colon. Um, there are also bags where uh, if a patient has a problem with, um, with the skin, you can cover that with, with a large bag, special bag, and then you ozonize that. So there are many ways that you do this. So now Tomas is going to begin the... Can you explain how you, why the UV? Oh, okay. So we also, when, when the blood goes back, uh, we use a special type of, of crystal where the blood goes through and then uh, we expose the, the, the red blood cells especially, but the rest of the blood as well, to um, UV light. And, and you can, there's many settings uh, uh, to do this, but our, our main purpose of exposing this to UV light is for immune stimulation, especially of the dendritic cells. Uh, the dendritic cells are, are very important in a cancer patient. There are several studies that show that all cancer patients have a very low count of dendritic cells. And uh, dendritic cells are very important because they are the ones that actually uh, 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 tell the immune system who needs to be destroyed. Yeah. They're called finger-pointing cells uh, or presenter cells is a more technical name. And uh, if there's nobody to present the malignant cells to the immune system, then the immune system will not destroy them. And that's, that's why uh, cancer grows in patients that have very low counts of dendritic cells. So there's several ways of increasing that, uh, increasing the count of dendritic cells. Vaccines would be one of them. The problem is that usually the dendritic cell has a lifespan of 24 hours or less. And um, so we prefer to stimulate the patient's body with UV light for them to produce their, their own dendritic cells and, and to increase in number and quality the, the amount of dendritic cells so that whatever therapy we give them, the, there's going to be presenter cells to tell them where to attack and where not to attack. And so that's, that's very important. Uh, that we do this uh, for for our for our patients. And so it's always a closed circle, uh, uh, cycle and circle. There's uh, never contamination, so we're not worried about any infections. Is uh, the patient's own blood that's now been activated by ozone and exposed to UV light. So it's a simple procedure. It takes about 40 minutes altogether. The patients will feel usually very little after this therapy. Some, some of the patients will feel very relaxed and sometimes they, they need to take a nap. And the reason for that, as I explained, is that the, the vasodilation provokes a, uh, a, a low blood pressure that's temporary. And that's about it. Most patients have really no, no symptom uh, uh, after the therapy. Thank you.